Since ancient times, the Bible has warned us about the power of words. Proverbs 18.21 teaches us that the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who use it wisely reap the fruits of that power. But have you ever stopped to think about which words the Holy Spirit most desires to hear from us? He is our comforter, guide, and teacher, as promised by Jesus in John 14.26. He desires a deep communion with each of us, and this communion is often strengthened or weakened by the words we choose to use. Communication with the Holy Spirit is not just a formality, it is a practice that transforms lives. The words we speak, or even those we fail to say, have a direct impact on our Christian walk and the manifestation of God's power in our lives. Now imagine what would happen if you started declaring the words that truly intensify this spiritual connection that open doors for miracles, healing, and restoration. At this moment, you are about to discover how some words, so simple yet so profound, can radically change your spiritual life. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more edifying and transformative content. Testimony. Testimony is a powerful tool that not only glorifies God, but also inspires faith and courage in others. The Bible teaches us in Revelation 12, 11, that we overcome through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. When someone shares what God has done in their life, it directly impacts the people around them. For instance, imagine someone who has been healed from a serious illness. By testifying about this healing, not only does this person give glory to God, but they also encourage others to believe in restoration to trust in Christ, and to pray with faith, knowing that miracles still happen. Every testimony carries the power of spiritual transformation. A vivid example is the story of the man born blind in John 9, who, after being healed by Jesus, became living proof of divine power. People around him questioned, criticized, and even doubted, but his simple declaration of what he experienced was enough to silence all opposition. This demonstrates that testimony is a way to declare the presence and action of the Holy Spirit in our lives, a reminder that God remains active and present in every detail. In our daily lives, sharing what God has done for us is also a way to strengthen the fellowship among believers. Often, a sincere word about how faith helped someone overcome challenges serves as encouragement to those feeling discouraged. It's not just about great miracles, but also about the small daily victories that showcase God's faithfulness. Testifying is a form of praise, a way to thank the Lord for His goodness while planting seeds of hope in the hearts of those who hear. When we hear the testimony of others, we are invited to reflect on God's wonders in our own lives. Who hasn't wondered, could this happen to me too? And the answer is yes. When we hear about God's power at work in the lives of others, our faith is strengthened. This leads us to not only desire to receive, but also to share our own experiences, because by testifying, we touch the hearts of others, preparing the ground for the next move of faith. Words of faith. Words have unimaginable power when they are filled with faith. Jesus, in Mark 11:23, teaches us that if we have faith and do not doubt, we can say to a mountain, move and it will move. This is not just a metaphor, but a deep spiritual principle. Our words, when aligned with God's will, can transform realities. Imagine someone facing a financial crisis, and instead of despairing, they declare in faith that God will provide. This attitude not only changes how they view the problem, but also opens doors for divine action. The woman with the issue of blood, as told in Mark 5, is a living example of how words of faith can release miracles. By declaring in her heart that if she only touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she would be healed, she activated the power of faith. She didn't wait for grand prayers or rituals. Her simple, conviction-filled declaration resulted in her healing. This shows us that we don't need grandiose words, but rather a sincere heart and unwavering faith for the impossible to happen in our lives. It is important to remember that speaking in faith is not just about proclaiming what we want, but aligning our desires with God's will. 
When we declare that God is in control and trust that He has the best for us, our words become powerful. In everyday life, this can be as simple as praying with confidence for someone who is sick, declaring that their health will be restored, or affirming that a distant dream will be realized by God's grace. The secret lies in the sincerity and trust we place in the Lord. As we learn to use our words to declare faith, we begin to notice subtle yet profound changes. The environment around us transforms, the atmosphere of negativity dissipates, and God's peace takes over. This leads us to want to explore the power of words even further, and there is no better way to continue this journey than through praise and worship, where our words find even more spiritual strength. Praise and worship. Praise and worship are sincere expressions that go beyond words and songs. They are, in fact, an offering from the heart that glorifies God and attracts the presence of the Holy Spirit. As Psalm 22, 3 says, God inhabits the praises of His people. This means that when we praise and worship, we create an environment conducive to the powerful manifestation of God's Spirit in our lives. It's not just about singing hymns in church, but about living a life that constantly reflects gratitude and reverence to the Lord. Many people think that worship is reserved for specific moments, but it can and should be present in our daily lives. When we wake up in the morning and start the day by thanking God for life, that is a form of praise. Or when facing adversity instead of complaining, we choose to praise God for the strength to overcome it. We are transforming our reality with worship. These sincere moments of praise create a direct connection with God, allowing His peace and presence to fill every situation. Praise also has a transformative power in the spiritual environment. Remember Paul and Silas, imprisoned and chained, yet still praising God in prison, Acts 16.25. That praise opened the prison doors and freed not only them, but everyone around them. This teaches us that when we choose to worship God in the midst of difficult circumstances, we can see spiritual chains being broken, bringing deliverance and victory into our lives and the lives of others. True worship touches the heart of God and transforms us from the inside out. When we enter into a state of worship, we draw closer to God, and this prepares us to receive the directions and blessings He has for us. Worship connects us to the Creator and paves the way for gratitude, which is a natural extension of this surrender to God. And it's about this transformative power of gratitude that we can speak next. Gratitude. Gratitude is a spiritual key that opens doors to God's presence in our lives. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, we are called to give thanks in all circumstances, and this is not without reason. Gratitude changes our perspective, helping us see blessings instead of difficulties. Even in moments of pain or uncertainty, thanking God for what we already have creates an environment where the Holy Spirit can act more freely. It's not about ignoring challenges, but recognizing them as opportunities for God to show His power and grace. Practicing daily gratitude can completely transform the way we face life. Imagine someone who, in the midst of financial difficulty, decides to thank God for the small daily provisions, the food on the table, health, family. This simple act of gratitude not only brings peace to the heart, but also opens the door for God to do more. When we focus on the blessings we already have, instead of complaining about what we lack, we attract more of God's presence and promises into our lives. Besides blessing us personally, gratitude also has the power to impact those around us. When we thank God in front of others, even in the midst of adversity, we become a living testimony of faith and trust in the Lord. This can inspire others to also be grateful, transforming family, workplace, or even entire community environments. Gratitude is contagious, and by sharing it, we contribute to a cycle of praise and faith that deeply pleases God's heart. It's interesting to note how gratitude goes hand in hand with forgiveness. A grateful heart is also more likely to extend forgiveness because it understands that everything we have is by God's grace. Just as gratitude lifts us spiritually, forgiveness frees us, bringing healing and restoration to our lives and our relationships. Forgiveness. 
Forgiveness is one of the most powerful tools for healing and spiritual liberation. Jesus clearly teaches us in Matthew 6, 14, 15, that if we forgive others, we will also be forgiven by the Father. This shows that forgiveness is not just an act of kindness, but a spiritual condition for receiving God's favor and mercy. When we harbor grudges and resentments, we block the flow of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's like trying to carry a heavy burden on a journey where God asks us to walk light and free. Forgiving doesn't mean forgetting what was done, but choosing not to let someone else's mistake dominate our emotions and decisions. The example of Joseph in the book of Genesis is emblematic. After being betrayed and sold by his own brothers, Joseph chose to forgive them, not for their sake, but because he recognized God's greater plan. The forgiveness that Joseph extended not only restored his family relationship, but was also crucial for the fulfillment of God's plan of salvation for the entire people of Israel. This teaches us that forgiveness opens doors that we often cannot see in the heat of the offense. In daily life, extending forgiveness can be a challenge. How often are we hurt by the words or actions of those close to us? But it is precisely in these moments that the Holy Spirit invites us to forgive. If there is someone who has hurt you, start with a simple act of prayer, asking God to help you release that person. Prayer is a powerful ally in this process, and when we pray for those who have hurt us, our hearts are softened, allowing God's grace to flow freely in us. Forgiveness, when exercised sincerely, brings an incomparable lightness. It releases our spirit and renews our peace. It is a crucial step to restoring relationships and allowing God's plan to continue unfolding in our lives. And with a heart lightened by forgiveness, we begin to see the world with wiser eyes, guided by the Holy Spirit, moving in the direction of divine wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is a precious gift that comes directly from God, and the Bible teaches us that we should ask for wisdom whenever we need it. James 1. 5 reminds us that God gives wisdom generously to all who ask, without reproach. But this wisdom is not simply knowledge or intelligence, it is the ability to see situations from God's perspective and act according to His will. Wisdom allows us to discern what is just, true and good, even when circumstances seem confusing or adverse. The example of Solomon perfectly illustrates the transformative power of divine wisdom. When confronted with the challenge of leading a nation, Solomon asked God for wisdom to govern justly. The result was a prosperous and peaceful reign, marked by decisions that reflected God's will. Likewise, in our lives, when facing difficult decisions, we should seek this divine wisdom in prayer, trusting that the Holy Spirit will guide us through every situation, even the most complex ones. Wisdom also manifests in small, everyday choices. It can be something as simple as deciding how to react to criticism or how to advise a friend going through difficulties. When we ask God for wisdom, He empowers us to make decisions that honor His will. A useful practice is to set aside daily time to meditate on the scriptures, where God's wisdom is clearly and powerfully revealed. Verses like Proverbs 3, 5, 6 teach us to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not lean on our own understanding. When we are guided by divine wisdom, we avoid many mistakes that could distance us from God's will. It is a spiritual compass that keeps us on the right path. And the more we seek this wisdom, the more we realize the importance of prayer and intercession. For it is through sincere prayer that the Holy Spirit instructs and reveals to us the wisdom needed for every area of life. Prayer and intercession. Prayer is our direct connection with God, and the Holy Spirit plays an essential role in this spiritual dialogue. Romans 8.26 teaches us that even when we do not know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. This shows that prayer goes beyond words. It is a sincere expression of our hearts. When we pray fervently and sincerely, the Holy Spirit works in our prayers, aligning them with God's will and bringing transformation both in our lives and in the lives of those for whom we intercede. Intercession is a form of prayer that has a profound impact. 
Just as Moses interceded for the people of Israel, Exodus 32, 11, 14, we are called to intercede for others, whether for family members, friends, or the nation. When we place the needs of others before God, we are participating in an act of love and compassion, allowing the Holy Spirit to act powerfully. A practical example would be interceding for someone who is sick, not just asking for healing, but crying out for God's restorative power to be manifested. Praying and interceding regularly strengthens our faith and draws us closer to God. It is in this space of prayer that we find answers, direction and comfort. You don't need to be an expert in words or follow a fixed script. What matters is a sincere heart before God. When we intercede for others, we become channels of divine grace, allowing God's love and power to flow through us. If there is someone in your life who needs help, start interceding for them today, confident that God hears your prayers and moves in response to them. The practice of intercession also prepares us to hear God's prophetic voice. For as we become sensitive to the Holy Spirit, He reveals not only what we should pray for, but also words of prophecy that can bring encouragement and direction. Thus, the next natural step of an intense prayer life is openness to spiritual gifts, especially prophecy. Prophecy. Prophecy is a powerful spiritual gift that allows us to hear and transmit God's voice for the encouragement, comfort, and edification of the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 14, 1, Paul exhorts us to eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. This is because prophetic words have the power to transform lives, bring direction in moments of uncertainty, and confirm God's will in our journeys. Prophecy is not just for great biblical prophets. It is a gift that the Holy Spirit distributes to believers for the benefit of the church and those around them. A biblical example is that of Agabus in Acts 11.28, who prophesied about a great famine that would come. Through this prophecy, the church was able to prepare and help those who would suffer from the scarcity. This shows us that prophecy has a practical and important application. It brings warning, encouragement, and prepares God's people for what is to come. Likewise, in our lives, prophetic words can direct us in important decisions, helping us follow God's will with greater clarity and confidence. Today, many Christians experience the gift of prophecy in various forms. It can be a dream, a vision, or a word placed in your heart to share with someone. If you feel that God is calling you to speak something, pray for confirmation and speak with courage. Prophecy, when inspired by the Holy Spirit, is always for edification, encouragement and comfort, never for confusion or despair. A good exercise for those who wish to develop this gift is to start praying for sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, always seeking alignment with God's Word. The gift of prophecy, when practiced responsibly and with submission to the Holy Spirit, opens doors to a deeper level of communion with God and with the brethren. It prepares us to be instruments of the Spirit in crucial moments. And as we learn to hear God's voice, we are also empowered to speak words of encouragement that edify the church and strengthen the faith of those around us. Words of encouragement. Words of encouragement have the power to lift the downtrodden, restore hope and strengthen faith. In Ephesians 4.29, we are instructed to speak only what is helpful for building others up, bringing grace to those who hear. Our words can be sources of life, especially for those who are going through difficult times. Often a simple word of encouragement can be the fuel someone needs to continue their walk of faith. A practical example is offering words of hope to a friend facing a family or financial crisis, reminding them of God's promises. Barnabas, whose name means son of consolation, is a biblical example of someone who practiced encouragement. In Acts 11.23, when Barnabas arrived in Antioch and saw the grace of God among the people, he encouraged them to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. This attitude brought spiritual growth to the community. Likewise, our words, when filled with sincerity and faith, can be an anchor for those who feel adrift. The Holy Spirit uses our words to restore hope 
and each of us can be a Barnabas in someone's life. In everyday life, practicing encouragement can be as simple as sending a message to someone, letting them know you are praying for them, or reminding a fellow Christian that God is in control of their situation. This small but meaningful gesture can change the perspective of the person receiving it, strengthening their faith. Encouragement is a practical way to show the love of Christ and build a stronger and more resilient community of faith. In times of uncertainty, these words are like lights guiding others through the darkness. As we seek to encourage others, we realize that encouragement not only transforms the one who hears, but also the one who speaks. When we choose words that build up, we connect more deeply with God's wisdom and will. And so, these words of edification intertwine with the practice of confession and repentance, which purify us and prepare us for a life of spiritual renewal. Confession and repentance. Confession and repentance are essential acts in the spiritual life of a Christian. In 1 John 1, 9, we are assured that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confession is more than just acknowledging wrongs. It is an invitation for God's grace to transform our hearts. When we sincerely confess our sins, we make room for the Holy Spirit to work in us, renewing our minds and guiding us toward a life of holiness and obedience. The story of the prodigal son in Luke 15 powerfully exemplifies the impact of repentance. When the son realized the error of his ways, he decided to return to his father, confessing his failure. The result was an embrace full of grace and restoration. Similarly, God welcomes us with open arms when we repent, ready to restore our fellowship with Him. This genuine repentance coupled with confession not only brings forgiveness, but also a deep spiritual renewal that draws us closer to God. In our daily lives, we can practice confession and repentance in simple moments. In prayer, we can bring before God those areas we know need change, without fear or shame, for He already knows our hearts and is willing to forgive us. A practical example would be including a time of confession during daily prayers, asking the Holy Spirit to reveal any hidden areas where we need repentance. This constant act keeps us humble and open to divine transformation. Confession and repentance also lead us to a new understanding of God's love. When we are cleansed and restored, we perceive more clearly how much God loves us and how He desires our spiritual growth. This prepares us to live a life of love, where we can reflect the grace we have received through words and actions that edify others, especially through the greatest commandment that Jesus left us. Love. Love. Love is the foundation of all Christian life and the greatest commandment that Jesus gave us. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul teaches us that without love, all our actions are empty and worthless. Love is more than a feeling. It is a decision to act on behalf of others, even when it requires sacrifice. This love reflects the very character of God, who is love. 1 John 4, 8 When we speak and act in love, we are not only obeying God, but also showing the world who He is. Our words, when seasoned with love, have the power to heal, restore, and strengthen relationships. A clear example of this love in action is the sacrifice of Jesus. He gave his life on the cross, showing the greatest act of love for humanity. This kind of unconditional and sacrificial love is what we are called to live out in our daily relationships. It can be as simple as forgiving a friend, helping someone in need, or offering a word of encouragement to someone who is discouraged. When we practice love, we reflect the heart of Christ and create an environment where the Holy Spirit can move freely. Love also enables us to deal with life's challenges more lightly. When we act in love, we transform difficult situations into opportunities to manifest God's grace. Think about those times when by responding with love instead of anger, the conflict was disarmed and peace prevailed. Love not only solves problems, but also draws us closer to God because He reveals Himself powerfully where there is sincere love. This is a daily practice that requires surrender, but when lived out, 
it transforms lives and environments. And it is through this love that we can plant seeds of hope in people's hearts. By loving as Christ loved us, we become living witnesses of the hope he offers us. This hope, when verbalized, strengthens the faith of those who hear and prepares the ground for the manifestation of God's power. Hope. Hope is one of the greatest gifts God gives us to face life's challenges. In Romans 15.13, we read that God is the source of our hope and that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can overflow with joy and peace even in the midst of adversity. Hope is like an anchor for the soul, keeping us firm when the winds of difficulties blow against us. It reminds us that regardless of the circumstances, God has a plan and his promises are true. When we speak words of hope, we not only strengthen our own faith, but also encourage those around us. David's example in Psalm 42:11 reflects how hope in God can renew our strength. When he asks himself why his soul is downcast, he immediately declares his trust in God, saying, Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him. Even in times of despair, David chose hope. And we, in moments of difficulty, can do the same. Choose to trust in God's promises, knowing that he is faithful to fulfill what he has promised us. This trust generates within us an inner strength that propels us forward, even when the road seems difficult. Bringing words of hope into our daily conversations can be a true balm for those who hear. Imagine someone going through illness or financial crisis, hearing from you that with God, there is always a way, a solution. This simple gesture of hope can completely change the perspective of someone who is discouraged. And hope, when sown, quickly germinates, bringing encouragement and renewing the faith of those who felt lost. Hope then leads us to seek peace because it reminds us that God is in control. When we have hope, peace floods our hearts, dispelling fear and anxiety. And in this peace, born of hope, we find the strength to continue trusting God in all situations. Peace. The peace that God offers is a peace that surpasses all human understanding. In Philippians 4.7, the Bible tells us about the peace of God that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This peace does not depend on external circumstances, but is the result of complete trust in God, even in the midst of life's storms. Being a peacemaker, as Jesus teaches us in Matthew 5.9, is more than just avoiding conflicts. It is actively bringing harmony and restoration where there is chaos and division. Words of peace have the power to transform environments and bring the presence of the Holy Spirit to any situation. The example of Abigail in 1 Samuel 25 shows us the power of words of peace. By intervening to prevent a confrontation between her husband and King David, Abigail used her wisdom to bring calm to the situation. Her pacifying words not only avoided disaster, but also brought honor and blessings to her household. This teaches us that being peacemakers in our relationships, whether in family or community settings, is a way to demonstrate God's wisdom and love. Instead of reacting with anger or impatience, we can be instruments of peace, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us in our words and actions. Bringing peace around us begins with an inner decision to trust God. When we have peace in our hearts, it is reflected in our attitudes and the words we speak. A useful practice is to seek peace daily in prayer, giving God all our worries and anxieties and asking him to govern our thoughts and actions. Peace is contagious. When we choose to act in peace, even in tense situations, we inspire others to do the same, spreading harmony wherever we go. However, this peace can only truly be lived when we cultivate it with a spirit of humility. For it is in humility that we acknowledge our total dependence on God, allowing His peace to flood our hearts and transform our relationships. Humility. Humility is a virtue that powerfully attracts God's grace. James 4.6 teaches us that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. 
Being humble does not mean thinking less of yourself, but rather thinking of yourself less, recognizing that all ability and every blessing come directly from God. Humility places us in a position of submission to God's will, allowing the Holy Spirit to fully guide our lives. When we speak with humility, acknowledging our limitations and exalting God's greatness, we create an environment of communion and grace. The greatest example of humility we have is that of Jesus, who, being God, chose to humble himself, taking the form of a servant, Philippians 2, 5-8. This example shows us that by living in humility, we are lifted up by God at the right time. In daily life, practicing humility can mean recognizing that we need help, being quick to ask for forgiveness when we are wrong, or accepting correction without resentment. These attitudes, though simple, demonstrate a heart submissive and dependent on God, who is always willing to shape us and use us for His glory. Humility is also reflected in our relationships with others, when we put the interests and needs of those around us ahead of our own. We are imitating the character of Christ. This can be exemplified in everyday situations, such as helping someone in need, even when we are busy, or attentively listening to a friend without rushing to offer advice. These small acts reveal a humble and serving spirit that pleases the Lord and promotes unity among believers. Living with humility brings a constant renewal in our spiritual lives, because when we position ourselves in submission to God, He lifts us up, fills us with grace, and enables us to live according to His will. And this life of humility naturally leads us to deeper consecration, where we fully surrender to God's plan. Consecration. Consecration is the act of completely giving our lives to God, setting ourselves apart for His purpose and glory. In Romans 12.1, Paul exhorts us to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is our reasonable worship. Consecration is not just a partial surrender, but a total commitment to God's kingdom, allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us and use us according to His will. When we consecrate ourselves, we acknowledge that our life does not belong to us, but is an instrument in God's hands to fulfill His plan. A classic example of consecration is the life of Daniel, who decided from a young age not to defile himself with the pagan practices of Babylon. He kept his life dedicated to God even in a hostile environment, and as a result, he experienced divine protection, wisdom, and favor. Similarly, when we choose to live a life of consecration, we decide not to conform to the world's standards, but to be shaped by God's will. This can mean making difficult decisions, such as giving up certain behaviors or habits, to live in holiness. Consecration is a continuous and daily process. Every morning, we have the opportunity to renew our dedication to God, whether through our words, thoughts, or actions. This can be done through moments of prayer, reading the Word, and constantly seeking God's presence. By consecrating our lives, we allow the Holy Spirit to purify and guide us in every step. This surrender draws us closer to God and makes us more sensitive to His voice and direction. When we live a consecrated life, we become recipients of God's power and grace in an extraordinary way. Consecration opens the door to a deeper communion with the Lord, where His presence becomes more tangible and His Spirit guides us more clearly. And it is through this consecration that we experience the healing, restoration and renewal that only God can bring into our lives and to those around us. Healing Healing is one of the most wonderful gifts that God offers us. The Bible repeatedly shows us that God is a God who heals. In Isaiah 53 verse 5, we are reminded that by His wounds we are healed. Healing, however, is not only physical, but also emotional and spiritual. When we trust in God and seek His presence, He has the power to restore every broken area of our lives. The process of healing is a journey of faith, where we learn to depend on God for Him to work on our wounds and restore what was lost. 
A notable example of healing in the Bible is the woman with the issue of blood, Mark 5, 25 to 34. She had spent everything she had on doctors, but it was by touching the hem of Jesus' garment with faith that her healing occurred. This story teaches us that faith is the catalyst for the manifestation of God's power in our lives. Often, healing begins when we recognize that our strength is limited and we completely surrender our situation into Christ's hands, trusting that He has the power to restore us. In our daily lives, healing can manifest in various ways. It can be a prayer for physical illness, a request for intercession for an emotional battle, or even a process of forgiveness that frees our hearts from past wounds. Praying with faith for healing is essential, but it's also important to remember that God's timing is perfect. Sometimes healing comes immediately, and other times God takes us on a path of spiritual growth before full restoration. The healing that God offers is not limited to us. It also empowers us to be agents of healing in others' lives. When we pray for those who are sick, both physically and spiritually, we become channels of God's power to transform lives. And this complete healing prepares us to experience even greater miracles as we continue to walk in faith and total dependence on the Lord. Perhaps now is the time to reflect on the words you have been using in your prayers, conversations, and your relationship with God. It's time to apply everything you've learned here. Start speaking with faith, declaring gratitude, praise, worship, and forgiveness. What's stopping you from using these words that the Holy Spirit loves to hear? And more importantly, what do you have to lose by trying? Don't miss this chance to see God act in an extraordinary way in your life. Subscribe to the channel, activate notifications, and keep learning how to live a life of power, faith, and intimacy with the Holy Spirit.